introduce myself by doing an exercise and I'm going to give you the work to do so you can, you can introduce me. So I'm going to go to the audience and I'm going to give someone, unfortunately I've got you here. Ah. <laughs> May you kindly read for me, take the action on the piece of paper for me, thank you. Which had the table, maybe I'll go to this one. Maybe I'll go to this, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Take that action for me. And maybe I'll go maybe to a table over there. And I'm going to give someone who's the lucky girl. There you go. So I've given these three individuals an exercise and I would like them to take the action written on the paper. Thank you. In a few seconds. Without Googling it. Oh. <laughs> Without Googling it. Yes, so just take the action for me. Thank you. Here's the pen you asked for. Thank you very much. And the next person. Thank you. And you? I need to put are, it you on the table. are you refusing? No, no, I need to put it on the table. That's what okay, I'm saying. thank you. You can put it on the table. Thank you. Have you understood what I asked for? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you. So your answer is you don't know, right? Thank you. So with this little exercise, I just wanted to demonstrate what health inequalities and health inequities look like. So I'm going to give you to read for me what the action was. Um, it's an Italian sentence uh, that says, for three people to have an appendix made, please. Thank you. And I'm going to give someone who I know can read this to read for me. Thank you. And you can translate. Yeah. Bring me the pen which is on your table. Okay. So then I wanted to just do that exercise. And I'll go on and say, with that case example, 66% of all adults in England, they've, they've used the internet, right? And currently, from the statistics that we have, 48% and 19%, that was the use of, of the internet people for health, apps, and everything in the UK. And that was in 2020. And that number has increased since the pandemic. And we are all here having a conversation that we are going digital and we are using digital tools and accessibility is available to people. But is that true? Because if he had come to me and he needed to receive a service and he couldn't read and understand, but I've given them equal opportunities for them to have access to what is available or to take, to take a required action. Yet, two people were not able to take that action. This is a good example of just one example of how we can end up with health inequalities if we do not take the right action or produce or give the right tools to the right people to take the action that we want them to do. So I would like to echo the point that Dr. Bola said to say digital is an accelerator and it can be an accelerator because we saw it in the pandemic as we went through it into 2020 and as we came out of it, it's going to be three years this year. It can be done, but are we prepared to take the right action and make it accessible to the people we want to use? Our, what action are we going to do to reach the people that we have defined in those, and I'll put in quotes, I think we call them excluded groups. I don't know, we have a name, but we know these people. They are underserved, they are underprivileged, they have got no access. For one reason or the other, as complex as it is, we know what the issues are. But how many of us have got our websites in the top six languages spoken in the UK. How many of us have got our devices and our communication? And that's pretty basic, to include everyone and not, not, not let anyone be left behind. So now, 
I am from Guy in the Mirror, and I'm on a mission to make healthcare equitable and accessible, and make it equal for all of us, not leaving anyone behind. And I'm the founder of CheckUp Health, a digital technology which is homegrown in the UK, which is both video and online consultation. And it's got a clinical dashboard, a patient facing up with six languages. And we want to work in collaboration with primary care services to make sure that healthcare is accessible to everyone. Thank you, Fandai. What a powerful example. So my question would be, starting at the basics, what advice would any of you give to individuals, digital leaders within our organisations as to how to tackle the issues around digital literacy? So some, so some really basic take-home points that you would give us. Because um, that's certainly one of the things that's ended up in my service line to tackle. So I really welcome advice from the panel. Thank you. Great question. So, Fonda, I'm going to come to you first. Is that okay? Thank you. I really think that we are overthinking the problem. And I think the problem is actually very simple. If we go back to basics and look at what is inclusivity, that's where I would start, and then look at the policy and break it down, and implement simple things within the organisation, within the services, of what we can actually do in our day to day to make sure that everyone whom we serve is included. And also, very important to have diversity in terms of representation. A good example is that if you are serving a population that has got most of the population group that you're serving as Italians, I would rightfully say that it would be more important to have Italians on your team because there are things as we go digital that cannot be known if you haven't lived them. So if you are designing or implementing something or providing a service, it's better off to have people with those lived experience so that they can interpret those experiences so that your service and your approach can be culturally competent and it can also be inclusive in its approach. The way it looks, the way it feels, the way you even interact with, with, with that demographic. I think that simple things, starting basic, would actually make a huge, huge difference. <laughs>